hello folks welcome to another video how's everybody it's memorial day weekend on memorial day got my water <clears throat> and today i'm also drinking the original thai red bull and uh, yeah everything on this bottle is <laughs> pretty much in thai except for uh right here where it says kating dang energy drink that of course kating dang means red bull in thai and uh other than that that is the only english right here uh everything else on the bottle the ingredients uh the, you know the the uh well you know the what's in the bottle like sugar sugar content and stuff like that it's all in thai and uh, i thought they made these in California but uh, I could be wrong this is made in Thailand and because uh, it was made in California well, why would they put all the uh, all the Thai writing on it yeah yeah but if you go to Thailand this is what you're going to be drinking the uh, they do have the carbonated ones over there but the uh, the carbonated Red Bull is more more of a Western drink and uh, and I, and I believe the the carbonated Red Bull and the Thai Red Bull are, are, are uh, two separate entity. Looks like wind's picked up. So, anyways, I will be smoking Cuban honey uh, truffle. It's um, something truffle. I keep forgetting. But uh, yeah, I, I ordered a box of twenty of these. Um, uh, uh, they had it on sale because because. Uh, because I've not smoked it before, before I ordered the box of 20. Now the pre-sniff, it kind of, it kind of has a chocolate smell to it. <clears throat> it's not a bad smell, it's, it's it kind of a, a, a chocolatey, a chocolatey smell to it. Uh, yeah, but the, um, it actually smells better once, once lit. It actually has a better... better scent okay this one nice smooth draw it, it, it uh, actually lit pretty evenly let's put that up and uh, yeah I've been meaning to get uh, Cuban honey a southern gentleman uh, that one is a flavor that a lot of people like, including myself. The the vanilla is not bad either. Uh, this one's not bad either. If I if uh, if I were to find it on sale again, I would definitely repurchase. Um, but I wouldn't pay full retail for this. It's uh, like I said, the the, the aroma, uh, the pre sniff before you lit, before you light it. It's kind of chocolatey, but it's not um, not the best smelling aroma but like I said once it's lit I'm trying to look at it to see if there's bloom on this that would that would be kind of, that would be kind of funny making sure it's not fungus because because bloom is supposed to be patchy fungus is supposed to be round and fuzzy anyways yeah they, yeah this has been sitting in my uh, my uh, masonry jar And of course, for us Asians, you know, summer's almost over. Uh, we had, uh, at least, at least here in my area, or, uh, or, or part, we did, we did the uh, our version of Halloween celebration a few weeks ago in Thailand, you know, where uh, Red Bull <laughs> comes from. Uh, they're doing theirs this week. Uh, so, so basically, what you do is you you uh, you get. Um, offerings uh, for your uh, for your ancestors so you uh, you know you would put food and stuff into the offerings that uh, that your and that, that your ancestor like like you know they you know if you're a Westerner and you follow Buddhism and you're doing <clears throat> this uh, uh, this offering this uh, Halloween Buddhist Halloween uh, you can put pizza slice in there <laughs> or hamburger slice you know, 
and you would leave the offering, of course, over in Thailand, they leave the offerings you know, in the streets and stuff like that. Uh, and wild animals, wild dogs would come along and eat it, and that's okay. Uh, I remember when I did it last year, you know, I got some uh, some home cooking from my mom, and use and use that as offering and say, hey, you know, I'm pretty sure dad and grandmother, grandfather would love you know, some of the home cooking stuff. So I put some of that in, and uh, some of it. It, 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 it actually has, uh, it actually had whole pepper, like like Thai chili, in it, and uh, you know I, I put it out in the the, uh, the front yard, the backyard. Of course, for the backyard, I didn't want the dogs to get to it, so I put it up like a, in the bushes. Uh, I put it up high where where, where the dogs uh, wouldn't be able to reach. Um, Something came and ate them, the ones in the front yard and backyard. They even ate the pepper. And I'm sure it's probably the raccoons or the possums. Uh, you know, when the dogs are sleeping, they're, they're old hound dogs, so that they, they, you know, the raccoon comes and make a racket. You know, <laughs> the dogs probably won't even hear. They're, they're, they're half deaf, half blind. You know, a 17 year old uh, is very old for dogs. So I was surprised, like, wow. Yeah, they, they uh, you know, the only thing they didn't eat was the candle and the incense, the aluminum foil that I used to uh, hold all of the offerings. But they ate everything. They ate, they ate the bananas, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the sticky rice, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the home cooking that my mom did, made uh, with, with, with the whole, whole Thai chili in there. I was like, wow, every, every single one of them. I checked, I was like, wow, man. It's like, everything is gone. And it wasn't the dogs that ate it, especially the one in the front. Yeah, and I'm smoking a lighter cigar. This this is a dark wrapper, but it is a light smoke. Yeah, the, uh, the Gurkha that I smoked the other day, I'll probably get that video uploaded before I get this video uploaded. Yeah, but the Gurkha that, that I smoked the other day, it uh, kind of kicked, kind of kicked my ass. I was like, it's like, whew. Yeah, I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not much of a Maduro smoker, but but I love the flavor, the taste, and <laughs> the aromas of uh, Maduro cigars. And, and of course, don't don't think you know. Hey, maybe, maybe I should smoke a nub. You know, just because a, a nub is small, don't mean a uh, a nub Maduro won't kick your ass either. Yeah, if, if um, I guess a Maduro about this size, which is a Corona size, would uh, would probably do good. Yeah, so I was surprised how all the even the even the uh, the whole pepper. Now, when it comes to spiciness. The uh, turns as, as it turns out, I know dogs don't have spice receptors on their tongue, so dogs can eat spicy and, and it doesn't affect them as much as it would us. Not that you should be feeding spicy foods to your dog, because because uh, even if they, even if their tongue doesn't have the receptors for it, you know their you know, their their stomach and, and and coming out their butthole. <laughs> You know, it'll probably give your dog diarrhea. So it would, so it would seem that um, the same for raccoons and uh, and possums. And I kind of thought about that. I was like, you know what, humans? You know, we we've been eating spicy food for you know millennium, you know, uh, uh, for uh, probably probably forever. You know, who knows? Who knows, I know, um, of course, as for Westerners, it, it wasn't until Marco Polo, it wasn't until Marco Polo in the 10th century, you know, went, went over to, to India and China, did, uh, did, did, you know, uh, spices such as uh, curry, you know, garlic, and chili, and, and, and I guess pepper, chili, I guess chili would be pepper, made its way made his way to Europe. 
and that's the thing with that just because i don't think i don't think pepper actually because i think from there pepper made his way to africa because i was wondering it's like okay you know i don't think you know because someone's come uh, i guess there's a uh, i guess a um uh, i guess an idea that uh, you know african food is spicy and and if you trace and if you trace spice such as such as pepper uh, you know it, it, it came from the east you know from uh, uh, from South Asia and East Asia China India and, uh, and I'm pretty sure you know, with Marco Polo and the spice route being being opened up I'm pretty sure it, it uh, pepper made its way to Europe and made its way to Africa so yeah so it's been it's been well, a thousand thousand years And even before then, and and, uh, and of course, there's the uh, stereotype that Asians can eat uh, can withstand pepper more than, than than say white people. And the same thing, you know, blacks can can at least blacks from Africa can withstand pepper more than black folks here in the U.S. <clears throat> and of course, pepper, and and, <clears throat> and I'm pretty sure at the beginning. Uh, we were probably like dogs where we didn't have the receptors uh, for spice and then uh, then over time our body our body uh, uh, created I guess uh, the our body our body um, something about that uh, de uh, uh, developed the spice receptor to tell us that hey stupid <laughs> you know you're eating something that's probably not good for your body uh, well, pepper is neither bad for you, <laughs> nor is it, nor is it healthy for you. Of course, some people say that the uh, that eating spicy food is healthy for you, but uh, I, I don't know about that. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure that over over the millennium of uh, uh, but then how would that explain? Yeah, I guess humans always had <laughs> spice receptors. Cause I guess that how would that explain Westerners? Then again, it's been it's been about a thousand years. So, anyways, so so on to political news. Of course, as we all know, Trump. Uh, they're, they're they're still harping on the uh, Trump calling veterans and you know, losers. Uh, the 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 I guess the, the the Democrats in New York took a projector and projected that uh, onto Trump Tower, which is technically Trump's private home. Uh, you know. Uh, th that would be like uh, conservatives or Republicans, you know, uh, uh, going to Biden's house, which is what, in, in New Hampshire or Connecticut, wh whatever, whatever, whatever state is that he's a senator from. I, I, don't, I don't know. It's, it's up in the Northeast somewhere. <laughs> and projected, you know, creepy Joe, you know, uh, uh, Joe Hyden, you know, onto his house. Not to mention there are guests that are staying in Trump Tower. You know, and if I were a guest, I wouldn't want <clears throat> one. You know, remove that stupid Black Lives Matter mural, which, which I don't know. I think it's still there, uh, but but every time, you know, every time they clean it up and put it back and put it back, you know, and put the mural back on, someone goes and defaces it. <clears throat> so. Uh, So of course Trump came out with with the the uh, you know, getting rid of that uh, uh, race race theory training uh, for government workers, which I applaud. You know we, we don't need to we, we don't need to teach racism you know, to our government workers. You know we don't, we don't need to be telling a white you know a white person, hey you're an oppressor. Telling the black workers, "Hey, you are the oppressed." That's communist BS right there. You know, that's the same thing as the Bolshevik telling the poor farmers, "Hey, you are the oppressed." You know, the uh, I forget, I keep I keep forgetting. I should look it up. The, you know, the czar and his family and all the royals are the oppressors. <clears throat> Since we don't have farmers and peasants, <clears throat> well. I mean, the Democrats do here in the U.S. We don't have royalty, of course. Yes, no black person you are oppressed. White person you are the oppressor. 
Well, same thing, <laughs> same thing that the uh, communists did over in Russia and China. Yeah, and of course the the uh, you know the uh, the KGB defectors that came to the U.S. They pretty much told us the communists' playbook. Uh, yeah, and I still need to order that that that, that Yuri uh, Bezanov's book. Uh, I will. And yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll probably order it pretty soon and uh, give it a reading uh, before the election comes around, <clears throat> which is in, in about a month or so here. Yeah, and if you are going to register to vote, you need to do it uh, before October rolls around. Uh, um, I would do it before October. I think it's like October. 10th yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, don't quote me on that i think the cutoff for 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 uh, registering to vote is like october 10th i believe it, it's something like 30 days uh before the election but but of course if you're a democrat <laughs> but if you're a democrat you can register and vote the same day so you know <laughs> so he got rid of that and of course, he's uh, you know, telling he's not it's, it's not a threat. He's just telling them, hey, if you guys teach the leftist sixteen, I think it was sixteen nineteen propaganda, which is basically the the uh, uh, you know t to them that's when the U that's when U.S. history began, not seventeen seventy six, or or actually not 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 was it fourteen was it fourteen seventy four. 1464 is when Columbus uh, founded the uh, East Indies, <clears throat> East Indies Island. So leftist, so leftist wants to, uh, cause leftist revisionist history is now the United States, the United States, uh, history of the United States started in, in, in 1619. That's when the first, first slaves came over. Not when Columbus found the East Indies. Yeah, uh, not when the Mayflowers came over with the very, very first white settlers. You know, they want to skip all of that. They want to skip Jamestown. You know, they want they basically want they basically want to skip the thirteen colonies history, and and, and uh, you know, but if, but if you check the history book, it's actually you know if if they want to be correct, it's actually you know sixteen sixteen sixty. It's when the first uh, uh, African slaves came over to the United States, and they didn't come directly from Africa. They, uh, if you want to be technical about it, you know, they, they came they came from South America, Central America, and uh, the the, the uh, I guess to the uh, Virgin Islands, then to the U.S. So technically, they came from the Virgin the uh, uh, I guess the the African slaves came to the U.S. through the Virgin Islands, so they didn't come directly from Africa. And yes, and there are uh, slave trader uh, routes that, that there are maps out there, and lots and, and lots of this are on liberal, you know, liberal news and liberal websites. <coughs> so it's not like the liberals are trying to hide it, but of course, with this, you know, sixteen nineteen BS, they may get rid of those, you know, they may start start getting rid of those maps. Going, no, it, it, they came straight from Africa to the U.S. You know, there wasn't a stopover in South America and then a stopover at the Virgin Islands, uh, the Caribbeans, <laughs> because that's where the Virgin Islands are, it's in the Caribbeans, then to the U.S. And then in the 1800s, it was white men who outlawed the, uh, the transport of uh, African slaves from Africa over to the, uh, at, least, at least the U.S. I don't know about, I, don't know about uh, I think it was still continuing in South America, but but to the U.S., the 1800s, they put a stop to it. So so whoever was here was it. I guess while we're still on this subject, of course, you know when you try to tell the leftists, you know, leftist communists now, hey look, man, you know you're trying to blame 100% of white folks. As a matter of fact, this is trying to blame everybody who's non-black at this point. Now that includes Hispanics and Asians, 
you know, and, 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 you know, and anybody in between. Now, I tell black folks, hey, man, I ain't paying for your reparations. <laughs> my, my ancestor wasn't here. You know, he said, you're, you're asking 25% of the population. Because Hispanic, Hispanics make up. Hispanics make up 17% 17, 17% of the population. Uh, Asians, you know, that includes uh, East Asians, uh, Southeast, you know, South Asians, and Middle Eastern. Yeah, they consider them Asian too. And Middle Eastern, then, then, then Asians, Asians make up somewhere around 7% of the population. <clears throat> so, so you're asking about, you know, 24, 25% of the population to pay reparations uh, for, for you. <laughs> you know, well, these people had nothing to do. Well, maybe the Middle Eastern, you know, <laughs> maybe the Middle Easterners, uh, Yeah, 25% is a pretty big chunk of the population. And, and then, of course, you go to, well, you know, only 3% of the white folks you know, own slaves. And, and of those 3%, they were, they, they were either white Democrats or they were white Jews. No, no, no. no. Then, then you get, no, no, but, but then all the white people back then benefited from slavery. It's like, well, there's where you're wrong again. You know, the cottons, the cottons that were picked, were sold to the industries in the north. The money was pocketed by the plantation owner. He, you know, he didn't go around, he didn't go around the south going, here you go, man, Johnny, you know, uh, 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 what is it, uh, Robin Hood style? No, he kept all that money for himself. And of course, the 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 uh, the in industry owners in the north that that. Uh, process the cotton yeah they 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 pocketed that money themselves too because that cotton went overseas most of it went overseas you know some of it of course went to textiles and things like that where clothing and such were made and yes there were uh, 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 people who worked in the in the mills and and things like that but they, they were getting paid pennies actually back then they had slave you know uh, uh, you know uh, Child, you know, child labor, slave labor is in the north too. And yes, there were Democrats in the north who supported slavery. So they had them in the north and in the south. And I'm pretty sure that the uh, a big a big majority of them were the uh, factory owners in the north. Not a bad cigar. It's a like I said, it's a light cigar, so I'm I'm smoking it and having no problem. Maybe it's the Red Bull. I don't know. So you go, well, the majority, you know, pretty much the 97% of the white folks in the South didn't see any of that money that, that was, that was uh, when the cotton was sold. Uh, they didn't see any of the money when the cotton was processed into textile. Uh, you know. So no, there was no benefit. Then they'll go, oh, but blacks built the U.S. It's like, well, during slavery, Blacks didn't build anything. They stayed on the plantation and picked cottons. Or, or then they go, oh, well, after slavery. So, okay, well, after slavery, during Reconstruction, 1860 to 1900 was Reconstruction. And, and uh, during Reconstruction, many of the slaves remained on the plantation as sharecroppers, which, was, which is basically another form of slavery. It was, of course, the, the, uh, the plantation owner pretty much said, hey, you can stay here. You can stay here for free as long as you work the land for me. You can you can you know keep a you know a, a, a couple of acres for yourself to grow whatever you want. You know the house you can stay in for free, uh, but uh, you know work work on my land for me. And of course, many of them, and, and of course in, in that generation, many of the slaves or the freed slaves. That's all they knew how to do. They didn't know how to do construction. You know, they didn't know how to build roads or build buildings. Well, the majority of them, you know, stayed on the pl plantation and farmed as, as sharecroppers. It was, again, another form of slavery. And then after the 1900s, when, uh, you know, this, this is when you're coming into the, the segregation and Jim Crow and stuff like that. Uh, uh, you know, uh, blacks in the South remained farmers. They, they, 
you know, they, they, they may have gotten some, some may have gotten their own land, some may have gotten their own, uh, <clears throat> their own business going, but um, as for building things that they, they didn't, you know, build roads, uh, you know, and it was in the 1920s is when, is when the, the, uh, the uh, I guess the, the white slave laborers you know, came over to the U.S., which would be the Italians and the Irish. And, uh, you know, they were the ones that built up the East Coast, built the, the infrastructure, the roads. Many of the buildings was, you know, built on the backs of the Italian and the Irish immigrants. And, of course, the, the, uh, the uh, Transatlantic Pacific Rail Railway was built on Chinese back. <clears throat> and the thing about that is, one, once the once the railway was done, a lot of the Chinese went back. You know, they they went back to China. And of course, a lot of them stayed in the West Coast. That's why there's so many Chinese over there in the West Coast. <clears throat> so once yes, yeah, so once they were done, a lot of them went back to China. Some stayed uh, over in, in the West Coast. And I read somewhere that the like direct descendants, like the the. Uh, the grandkids of the, the uh, um, I don't know, I don't, I don't think there was any reparations paid for, for the, uh, for the forced, forced Chinese labor. There were talks of it, but uh, it's like, yeah, well, you know, great grandpa is dead and uh, I don't care. <laughs> and yeah, a lot, and like I said, a lot, a lot of them are over in China, so good luck, good luck, uh, uh, you know, good luck uh, tracing those folks down. I'm going to take the band off. There we go. Came off nice and easily. So, uh, yeah, so thumbs up the trumpet. Like I said, I support a lot of things that he, do, that he does. And, 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 of course, things that he doesn't do, I call out. Uh, one would be the, uh, the, the uh, school choice. Now, school choice right now affects private schools and charter schools, and basically both you know, these these uh, uh, I guess these schools will be getting like uh, I'm assuming I don't know if they're gonna be getting basically they'll, they'll be getting vouchers, <clears throat> and they can I don't know maybe they'll get like ten vouchers, twenty vouchers for schools. Well, that yes, Trump he, he's building the wall. You know, we got the thirty. I guess in some sections 30 foot, in some sections 20 foot, but we do have the walls up where it's important, which is San Diego and El Paso. And on to the right, and, and from what I read, on the right is that the, uh, so the guy, the, the, the loser in Portland that uh, shot the Trump supporter, uh, they decided not to arrest the guy, I, I guess they're calling it self-defense shooting. So I guess I guess shooting an unarmed, unprovoked, you know, Trump you know, Trump supporter is a uh, okay. I, I guess it's considered self defense. So yeah. So first the police are you know asking a guy politely, hey, turn yourself in. And I was like, okay, well the brass the brass are saying don't bother turning yourself in. You're you're okay. And as for the Kyle kid, he's he's still he's still sitting in jail, waiting to be arraigned, I guess. And and formally charged. I don't think I don't think he's been formally charged yet. Uh, and and as I said, they're 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 going to wait uh, until after November to do all of these uh, cases. You know, in Minneapolis, the one in what's this? Is it North Carolina, with the McKnights. Uh, <clears throat> The uh, I guess the more recent ones was the uh, the, uh, you know, the 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 black guy in the Bronx. <clears throat> so so that one supposedly the the guy was high on drugs or something, man. And he uh, and I guess he he has a scuffle with his brother. Uh, he runs out of the house naked. Screaming in the street, and of course, people call the cops. It's like, look, now, why didn't one of you guys just get a club and beat him over the head? And don't call the cops, because uh, if you call the cops, 
you know things ain't going to go right. You know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a, a gang calling, calling you. You're calling your rival gang to come do something. Uh, you know, hey man, we found your boy here on the street. He's acting up. Can you come take care of him? <laughs> you know, I don't know. Like that is probably a bad example. But yes, you, you know, black folks should know by now that calling the cops, you know, is it, probably a bad idea. Same for the that Jacob guy in in Kenosha. You know, he was beating his wife's ass. So she calls the cop, and thing goes bad there. You know, it's like, it's like just stop calling the police, because because uh, if the police are the enemies of black folks, then don't call them. Uh, you know, take care of it yourself. Like in the case of the guy in the Bronx, you know, you know two or three brothers could have gotten out. You know, grab the guy. You know, I don't know, and, and, and drag him back to the house and throw him inside. I'm pretty sure the family wouldn't complain. Uh, but then again, if they end up, if those guys end up hurting, hurting and hurting that guy, of course they'll probably call the cops on them. So, so uh, yeah. So the guy, you know, decided to spit on the police officer. So they, so they put a mesh, a spit bag over his head, and then they pinned him to the ground to, uh, you know, to, you know, to, to, to get him cuffed up. And the guy becomes unresponsive, and uh, because they had him on a ventilator for like a week before the doctor's like, yeah, he ain't gonna make it. Let's, let's take him off. Now, in his case, it's probably the same thing as George Floyd. You know, he probably had a lot of drugs in his drug in his system, and he probably his heart probably gave out because one, you got you hopped up on drugs. Two, your adrenaline is going through the roof. Your heart is beating probably, you know, 200, you know, 250, 300, 300, you know, 300 beats per second. And it's only a matter of time before your heart gives out. Yeah, it's only a matter of time before you have cardiac arrest. When your heart is going that fast, even when you're, you know, even when you're working out, your heart doesn't, your heart rate doesn't go up that high. Or it shouldn't, anyways. And uh, see here. Yeah. Okay. But if you if, if you count, of course, disregarding the McKnights because they're not police. If you count at least the one that's made the news, we'll you know. Uh, of course, we got George Floyd. That's one. The. Uh, the drunk guy in in Atlanta, in Atlanta, Georgia. I forgot his name. The uh, this Blake character up in uh, Kenosha. The uh, guy in the Bronx. The guy, the the nineteen year old guy in L.A. That uh, of course was uh, had the stolen bike and the stolen handgun. You know he should have just dropped. He should have you know he. Should, you know, he, what he should have done was drop the bike, take off running, drop the gun, you know. Because <laughs> at that point, the gun was wrapped in a, in a shirt. So if he dropped the shirt with the gun inside, you know, <clears throat> while he's tussling with the, you know, you know, of course, police are going to catch up to him. But at this point, if he's tussling with the cops, at least he doesn't have a gun in his hand. And a less likely chance of him getting shot. You know, is he going to jail? Yes. Uh, but being that you're in, being that you're in California and especially LA, you know, uh, even if you are, even if you are a repeat offender, you, know, you you will probably get a slap on the wrist uh, for a stolen bike and uh, you know an illegal gun possession. And, and, unless you're in San Francisco and the Kamala Harris is the DA, then then you're kind of screwed. Well, actually, you'd probably be okay as long as you don't have weed. All right, well. And, of course, the, uh, 
know, the Democrats love playing the Freudian transference. You know, you got, uh, you know, you got the politicians coming up blaming Trump for all of these riots, all this uh, racial tension, all this unrest. You know, you you got, uh, you know, you got the MSN now blaming Trump for all these riots, all of these unrest. You know, and it's like, well, well, you know, all of these riots and unrest are happening in Democrat cities. Uh, in the case of Seattle, in the case of Portland, Trump offered uh, 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 federal aid, federal assistance, meaning, you know, federal officers will be going in there and cracking heads. And, and yes, the, the, uh, the 1,500 warrants, federal warrants, they are, are, they are beginning to serve those warrants. Uh, they're, they're, again, like I said, they're using facial recognition software with all the cameras um, to see if, if, it, 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 if, if um, you know, uh, uh, whoever's, I guess, has been arrested and uh, they uh, got your mug shot, you know, uh, they're, going, they're going to run that and see if, the, if it picks up anybody. Pretty sure it's going to pick up a lot of people. That's pretty good. The ash is hanging on, but it's it, it's about to fall off. And I am puffing on this pretty, pretty, uh, pretty steadily. So yeah, so Trump is doing something. That just it's just a question of, uh, you know, when 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 the uh, when the feds goes into these cities to serve these federal warrants. Now, will they be getting any assistance from the local police? They definitely won't be. They definitely won't be getting any assistance from the local government. And I'm pretty sure if the brass orders the police, hey, don't help the feds when they come in, uh, the police probably won't. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing with the, because uh, because I called the, kind of like in Seattle and Portland, I called the police communists too, because because uh, they they live. In that area, it's not like these officers, you know, live in uh, like Texas and they're flying to work every day. You know, they 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 live, eat, have family in that Portland area and in the Seattle area, and uh, so so you got all the communists out there, all the anti and Black Lives Matter tearing up things, burning up things, and the cops are being told to stand down. It's like, well, you know, the cops are communists too. I mean, they they live in the area, so so they're probably glad. That the the governor's no, uh, no, well, governor and the mayor's telling them to stand down. It's like, hey, I don't want a club. I don't want a club comrade in the head. You know, if comrade wants to burn up the buildings, you know, if they want to burn up the, the federal courthouse, you know, we're gonna let them do it. You know, and, if the, and if the feds come in, we won't assist them. So yeah, so hopefully, you know, that's that's something I kind of <laughs> had a realization. Like, you know what? Yeah, because someone was talking about, hey man, you know, if you want to be, you know. You, if you want to be a police officer, no hire, hire, hire local guys that lives in your city, or at least lives in it lives in a adjacent city. It's like, yeah, that's a good idea. You know, that's a, you know, because because uh, and a lot of a lot of cops do live in the city or live in a adjacent city, but then there are some who drive like way way across across a couple of towns to come into work, and he has no connection with the with the neighborhood and with the community that he's patrolling. But for the most part, yeah, officers do live in the city, or at least an adjacent city that they are a police officer of. So they have some sort of connection. They they have something to lose, you know, in in that city if something were to pop off. Like, hey man, you know, this is the, you know, this is the target that I go to shop at. And hey, this is the Planet Fitness, you know, Planet Fitness that I go to work out at. You know, hey, this is the, you know, this is the gun store that I go buy my ammo. So, so I got things. So you know what? You know those police officers in these de in these Democrat cities, a lot of them will probably be Democrats themselves, and the ones in Portland and Seattle are probably communists. You know, probably you know I'm pretty sure that a pretty big number of them are probably Antifa members, if not Antifa supporter. You know, straight up communists themselves. So, so uh, yeah, so that's something that, uh, you know, the Trump administration 
you know, when, he, when he's sending feds over there to, uh, you know, to, to, to quell the riots or to serve the arrest warrants, is that understand that you're, you're coming into a communist territory where not only are the people communists, but the government and the police are communists. It's, it's, it's like going to, you know, going to CC, you know, going to CCP Portland, you know, and uh, CCCCP Seattle. Yeah, I think the old USSR's uh, Communist Party was the was was like uh, four C's, CCCCP, or three C's. Yeah, it was three C's, CCP, CCCP was the old Soviet Communist Party. Uh, I'm pretty sure one of those C's stands for communist. And of course, the Chinese is two C's, which is, which is you know Chinese Communist Party. Yeah, this is going back to the '80s before you know the uh, before the uh, Russian Communist Party uh, was overthrown. And yeah, they're they're still there in Russia. Not a bad cigar. I'm almost done, so uh, I'll probably cut the video. I can put the cigar out. Yeah, so be aware, Trump. You know, when you send the feds to Seattle, at the California world, you know, any of these Democrat cities, you're going into communist territory. You're going into CCP territory. Or in some cases, CCCP territory. <clears throat> And you have to treat it. Uh, you have to treat it, you know, like you're going into a communist territory. Like this is this is hostile territory. Government's going to be hostile. Police going to be hostile to you. you know, the communist people, the civilians there, will be hostile to you. <coughs> yeah, I'm getting down to like the last inch here. So, uh, yeah, so, yeah, Cuban honeys, they're, they're not bad. I know a lot of the cigar enthusiasts don't partake in flavored cigars, but uh, but I do. Uh, every now and then, you know, I get into the man. I want to smoke something flavored. Um, you know, I've been smoking all of these uh, <clears throat> non-flavored cigars. Let's try some. Let's try some flavor. Try something a little bit different. You know, uh, of course, m maybe later. You know, um, you know, I'm, I know my my. Uh, Palette might de uh, develop a uh, a disdain, you know, for flavored cigar. But for right now, I'm still enjoying them. They are a lighter smoke. I still have a whole bunch of Drew Estates. Uh, uh, Drew Estate. Uh, what is it? Uh, the uh, Acid line. I still have a whole bunch of Drew Estate Acid. Uh, uh, I guess one of the websites had like a sell. <clears throat> and without even you know, going to the cigar store you know, and buying and trying it, I went and bought the a whole bulk of them. So, uh, so, so I guess if there's ever a cigar meet in the Dallas Fort area that, that I that I attend, uh, I'll take all those with me and go. Hey, trade anyone want to trade all of these acids? You know, uh, for 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 whatever you're trading. <clears throat> yeah, and of course, a lot of the the cigar forums do have a trade. A, a a trade section, but uh, I don't I don't feel like uh, I don't know how you would even mail it because you have to verify age and all that stuff. I guess you can meet somebody local. You know, yeah, yeah. There's tons of cigar smokers here in Dallas. So anyway, stay safe. Don't get sick. And if you do, it's just a flu virus. You know, coronavirus is you know. I, I almost forgot the uh, near my house here. There's a they set up this this uh, huge parking lot at, at one of the, the uh, one of the amusement parks. One is this this it's not Six Flags, but uh, but outside of Six Flags, there are other small water parks and amusement parks that uh, that's kind of like neighborhood parks. <clears throat> and it has a huge parking lot because it's closed down. And I hope they're not. I hope they're not out of business because uh, I don't know if they're getting any. Well, of course they're not now because it's Democrats are holding up the 1.3 trillion dollar stimulus. So yeah, I'm hoping that they that that little you know amusement amusement park doesn't go out of business because uh, they 
they haven't been open, you know, springtime or summertime. And of course, Six Flags is talking about, they, they, hey, we're going to reopen regardless of what the government says. Because, you know, we're going broke. Yeah, and of course, you know, uh, Disney is allowed to open, I believe. Disney, Disney World and, and Disney Parks across the U.S. are allowed, are, are allowed open, I believe. I don't know. I could be wrong. I don't have a Disney. We don't have a Disney Park here in Texas. But if all of these parks, like Six Flags, all of these small, smaller, smaller parks aren't allowed to, to reopen, then neither should Disney. But of course, Disney got other ways. You know, they have their, they have their, uh, you know, they have their movies, their TVs. Uh, they, you know, they, they have other ways of making money that these parks don't, unfortunately. <laughs> so yes, they got the parking lot all coned up. Uh, they got the tents set up, and uh, yeah, basically those that 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 is a vaccination. That the, it's basically a vaccination. I can't say the word. It's a vaccination center or a drive-through vaccination. So they, yeah, they already got the vaccination uh, 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 centers and stuff set up. So th this one is a drive-through. So. Yeah, they got all curved snakes through the parking lot with the cones. I was like, what the heck? Man, they got the cones? Because you know, one day I passed by, I saw all these cones. Like, what the heck are they doing? Is this, is this a driving school? They got the cones, and they got all set up with snaking through the parking lot. And then the next day I passed by, like, oh, they got they got tents set up. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, and it's those white tents that you see on the, uh, on the news. You know, it's, it's those little white tents. So I was like, ah, okay, this is a vaccination. This is a drive-through vaccination center where, uh, where you know, you drive up and they, they stick you with the, uh, the, uh, the, the needle full of, you, you don't know what, you know. Yeah, the problem with these lighter cigars is that when you, when you go through one, you're like, man, you know what? I'm still up for a second cigar, and then on your second cigar, you're like, oh, man, you know, maybe I shouldn't have lit the second cigar. I, I should have just let it go, and, uh, you know, now I'm, now, I'm, now I'm feeling all woozy kind of thing. But yes, check out your neighborhood and see where they got the, you know, uh, vaccine. It's probably going to be a, uh, a place that's got a big parking lot that's, that a business, that a business is, it has, has gone out of business. Uh, or, or or is forced to close because of coronavirus, you know, flu virus number 21. And uh, yeah, so I was like, man, yeah, they, so they're, they're gearing up for, the for vaccinations to come out. And uh, uh, and yes, of course we do in, in about, uh, what, uh, uh, two months here, when November, I guess uh, November when flu season comes around again. So, so it could be for flu vaccinations too, but it, it's still a drive-through vaccination uh, center that um, you know the government's got set up there. Or it could be like that um, that uh, Twilight Zone episode where we're you know, the, the aliens, the aliens land, and they got a book on how to serve man. You know, and the uh, you know when the uh, when the when the uh, <clears throat> And the aliens are choosing the the uh, and the aliens are choosing uh, uh, volunteers <laughs> to, to go onto their ship, and then and then you know you're uh, you're you're inside the ship before you make that connection that how to serve man is a cookbook. I love that episode. It's like the guys, you know, the, the the guy has the book, you know, and then he makes the realization. Oh, wait, this is this is a cookbook, and then that's when the 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 uh, the the, the uh, the ladder to the uh, uh, UFO closes up, and he's like, "No!" And then the alien comes around the corner, you know, the seven-foot-tall guy with bald head. It's like hey, it's time to eat. You know, meets back. It was kind of like that Lords of the Lords of the Ring with the uh, 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 the Fellowship of the Ring, you know, Part One, where the orcs like meets back on the menu, boys. <laughs> okay, now I'll cut it here. Again, thanks for watching. Stay safe. Don't drive to these riot zones. You know, stay home. 
Uh, if you're in a militia and the militia lead calls you up, I guess, I guess go. Uh, uh, but, but again, like I said, be be uh, be aware that uh, if if uh, you know if anything like like Kyle Rittenhouse happens, you know uh, you you better have a uh, you better have a defense shooting attorney on retainer. Have their number memorized, because uh, because uh, when you're because uh, when you when you're in the jailhouse, you know, they, they 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 strip you of everything, and you know you, 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 of course you know you, you, while well, you still have your cell phone, that's when you should be calling, not when not when you're at the jailhouse. I don't remember uh, it was a it was a eight 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 or eight five five eight seven seven. Ah shit, you know, yeah, you know, you'd be doing like that. Uh, Character from that uh, 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 what's that sh HBO show? The the the, the, the where, where they got the she name from? Yeah, you be doing that in the jailhouse. All right, well that's it. Thanks for watching and have a uh, you know a safe Memorial Memorial Labor Day, safe Labor Day holiday. Thank you.